Good night. Who? Do I to shut somebody up? Hey guys, thanks for hanging out. I built myself here a barricade over the weekend. Uh, got cut some holes in it, just out of some scrap plywood I had, and uh, I've been working on over the winter. I've been working on some positional shooting. I got an M&P 1522 with a Hunterton, Hunterton Arms 22 silencer with some uh, subsonic Aguila ammo, and uh, I got a small kind of know your limits type set up over here about 75 yards uh five inch circle four inch circle three inch circle and i had a two inch but i hit it with a 308 and sent it out into the woods somewhere so i just got the three targets now instead of the four and i got some uh wee bad uh pump pillows these are uh specifically made specifically made for positional shooting uh the company is w-i-e-b-a-d And basically what these pillows are, they're kind of like a rear bag, but they're oversized. More like a pillow. You could actually use one of these for a pillow if you wanted to. But um, they come with arm slings here. Um, a plastic type carabiner. You can clip it onto your gear. Uh, a lot of people actually run this and clip it onto their sling. And then they can slide it if they need it in the rear for a rear bag. Or if they want to slide it up the sling to the front, they can use it as a, a front support also for barricade type shooting. They come in a few different sizes. This is a large, um, and this is a medium. And then they do have a smaller version. Um, I find the medium works best because you can use it as a rear bag if you want. You can use it up front on the fore end if you want to run it off barricades or cinder blocks or whatever you're shooting off of just to protect your rifle. And it does give you a steady, uh, steady rest for the front end. You can use it as a rear bag. You can lay it flat if you want. You can uh, raise it up higher if you need more um, of the rectangle. You can use the top half or if you want to go even higher than that. For shooting downhill you can actually use the front of this so this is a pretty useful bag uh, both these bags do have the uh, the things for your arm and the whole purpose of these uh, you put it on the opposite side like so it's kind of hard with some big coats on but um, and basically you, you put you get your knee up and then you can actually hold the rifle uh, for shooting off a barricade like this you can get your knee up high and you can actually uh, basically extend your knee up so you get better better uh, positional uh, steadier shot basically and they come in different sizes so if you needed to go up higher you can actually use a, a bigger bag if you want to get up a little higher and they come in all if you're gonna shoot like uh, precision rifle type matches you need you need something like this these basically fill the voids um, you'll see when you're shooting like here all this down here is, is uh, empty some people will raise their knee up and you'll still have this void here it's just that little bit of that little bit of opening is going to give you um, a crosshair that's bouncing around on the target and make it hard to shoot like MOA size targets by MOA, I mean uh, three, four inches, three inch target at 300 yards, four inch target at 400. Um, we don't have a whole lot of space here on the East Coast, so what the guys around here try to do is make you shoot MOA size targets or just a little bigger. Out West, you may have more open spaces. You can shoot bigger targets, but typically here, most local ranges are 600 yards and in. So in order to make it competitive, they, they make you shoot smaller targets, so um, it's hard to keep your crosshairs on while you're shaking a little bit, and uh, if you don't have something like this, you're not going to have a chance. Basically, you don't have a whole lot of uh, rules. They're not illegal to use, so you want to give yourself as much advantage as you can, and these are definitely a big plus. Um, typically, I wear like a battle belt or a, a war type belt just to carry my gear, my Kestrel, extra magazines. I can actually clip this onto the molly in the back and uh, clip both of them if I need to and run around or whatever I need to do. Then I carry a regular size rear bag on my sling. 
I did a video previously about the Wee Bad uh, Tri Glide uh, goes onto your sling, and it's got holes in it for a QD mount. And you can actually take something like this. You can either clip it onto the sling if you want, or put a uh, QD through here and just clip it onto your rear if you don't want it to slide to the front or the back and you want it to stay stationary. Uh, these bags are really, really buoyant. Uh, you can kneel on them, stand on them, whatever you want to do. They don't, um, they don't flatten out. And what else is cool, I don't know what to use for uh, stuffing on the insides of here. It's not like babies, it's not sand. It feels like, uh, like teddy bear stuffing. But it's really light. So, obviously to put this onto the back of your rifle will give you a little bit of added weight. But compared to the rear bags from two years ago, this bag here, probably both of these bags together, is still lighter than the uh, the rear bag I was using a couple years ago, so they're they're way light. It, it it's going to add a little bit of weight to your rifle, but it's not going to give you that big of a disadvantage. It's giving you a whole lot more ability than it is costing you uh, time because your rifle's too heavy or making it not able to use. So they're a big they're a big plus. I figured I'd uh, whack the steel here a little bit, and just work on some posi positional type shooting and uh, just put it on video. If you guys want to watch it, watch it. If not, uh, oh well. So, for, the, for those of you that are watching, thanks. And uh, let's load up some magazines. It is freezing. Man, can't wait for summer. This is dedication. For those of you thinking about getting into uh, PRS type shooting, maybe at your local matches or something, just do it. Um, a lot of people, even friends of mine, are nervous to get into it. But if you never even try it, uh, you're never going to know whether you like it or you don't. And a lot of the guys, I'm sure in your area, same as my area, all the guys that have been shooting in these uh, competitions for a while, they're all friendly. They're all willing to pass on knowledge. Um, and, and the big thing about that's why these are so important and experience is so important we got 60 70 year old guys that can hardly run but they know how to create a steady position and all the guns we shoot not necessarily a 22 here but all the bigger guns um or the guns that you'd be using in a match they're all made to be accurate at least uh one moa or better so the hardest part is getting that steady position because you know the gun's going to make the shot. So creating a good foundation, a great, a good uh, position is, is the whole sport. So that's what you learn with experience. The more you shoot, it's not necessarily making you a better shooter with the rifle. It's making you get, it's giving you the ability to create a more steady position and experience on that end. So the rifle's going to do its job. You just need to do your job on the other end. So we're loaded up here. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to use the big pillow here. And these do have uh, little quick straps, so if you want to tighten them down, you just pull them, and that'll cinch down the, the things there and give you some added stability while shooting. So say here, if I was to just use, if I was just use the pillow here, this right here is a good height for me. But if I'm up here, I have to reach. So I have to get up higher. I have to get up higher, straighten my back, and now I have a void here. So either I can take this pillow and fill this second void that I just created to give myself a steady shot, or I can take this pillow, stick it under my knee, lift myself up, and now I still have the ability to use this pillow under my arm. So that's just uh, that's the type of stuff you learn while doing this. My teeth are chattering. 
I forgot to put my windscreen on the camera, so I'm hoping that the wind's a little better on this video than my first one. A lot of these matches, a lot of these matches, they'll tell you, okay, this station or this stage, you have to sit. So they don't tell you a whole lot. They just tell you that you have to sit. So you could actually take this and sit on this if it would benefit you. As long as your butt's sitting down, they don't, they don't really break down the definition to make it uh, more complicated. So you can get creative. Just like... Uh, another sitting stage they'll tell you you have to sit a lot of people will come and they'll they'll try to rest their rifle on their knees but you could bring a tripod so you could put your rifle into a tripod with uh, like a pig saddle or a hog saddle and you can use that sit on the ground and have a perfectly steady position um, it's just basically a lot of equipment a lot of added accessories that will make you a better shooter a lot of the time they'll say, oh, that extra equipment won't make you a better shooter, but positional type shooting, um, it really does. Uh, these, added, these added things here like this, a big plus, so. And if you're shooting like an AR type rifle, Typically, most people have a bipod on the front. I don't have a bipod on this just because it's, it's a 22. But um, typically, you'd have a bipod. You would drop your legs down, and that would give you something to run up against here to give you more stability. And while you le you're leaning into it to create um, less movement. So if you're just using an AR, Having a little stubby forehand on here, I typically use it just to uh, grab something to pull into my shoulder. But having that on the front is kind of like a barricade stop. And you could run it into the wall if you don't have a bipod. If you do have a bipod, you'd obviously want to flip your legs down to run it into here. And then keep your keep your stock or your barrel close to the corners, whatever, whatever hand you shoot with. If I'm shooting right-handed, I'm going to run the, the, the stock in the forehand into the right side of the wall. If I'm left-handed, I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. You're trying to create more contact. So right here, I have a big void right here. I wanna fill that void with something. Three for three. Let's switch hands here. See now, I got, I, you're not gonna be able to see it there, but I got myself a good position over here with my knee, but my rifle's too low. So if I got another one of these, I can just stick this up here, bring the rifle up. Now I got my big bag under my knee over here, and I got a solid position. Gotta work on left handed.
if we were shooting off the ground here, you'd be able to use your bipod and just be able to use a rear bag. But these here are a little higher on the front end. It's gonna make you get up higher. Um, so your rear, your regular rear bag's not gonna work. So if you had something big like these, you can just use these as rear bags. I'll shoot right handed. crazy even with a little 22 semi-automatic you still get that effect of your uh, your sights bouncing around especially with your heartbeat going up and down so it, it is good practice um, if you did have a bolt action 22 I see why people use that as a trainer because uh, with a semi-automatic you can just get into position keep pulling the trigger when in reality if you're running a bolt gun in a competition you're gonna have to work the bolt you're gonna have to work the bolt, which is gonna pull you off of your position itself, so. Ideal would be a bolt gun in a 22. I think I'm gonna pick one up in the next couple of weeks just for a little trainer. Um, but for now, I'm just working with the, uh, the bags, the barricades, just trying to improve my skills, um, creating a, a solid position for, uh, for shooting, so. So if you guys like what you're seeing, uh, you got anything you want to add to it or what you want me to do, um, just let me know. If you guys are interested in the barricade, maybe I'll post a video. I did uh, record that. Or maybe I'll just make another one uh, just to do on video so you guys can see how I did it. Uh, it actually worked out pretty good. I put some uh, just some strapping boards up here to give myself a little better base. Uh, sturdy up the barricade a little bit. And then I made the legs um, with wing nuts so I can take them apart easy, throw them in the back of the truck and get them to different places. So uh, pretty pretty pleased the way it came out. Um, if you guys are interested in pillows like these, I'll do a, I'm sure I'll be doing a lot of stuff with these. Um, but uh, these are, like I said, made by the company WeBad. Uh, made in USA, W-I-E-B-A-D, and must be WeBad.com. I'll post it in the description. And uh, I ordered these uh, Short Action Precision, uh, their website, and I'll post that in the description too and give you guys a few links to uh, picking these up, different sizes. Um, most usable ones, the middle size. If I, uh, if I knew that when I bought them, I would have bought just the middle and maybe the smaller. But instead I got the bigger in the middle and I have some old, some other rear bags that I use that are pretty good size. So it's kind of a big medium and little for me. But if you guys are interested, um, and with these spongies on here, you can actually take these and slide these over your barrel. Slide it down the fore end here. And you can actually just take these and leave these and run these on the front of your rifle. Um, slide it over your bipod and whatnot. Just to give you some added uh, support. And having something big like a pillow up front does make a big uh, big difference as far as you think you could just throw it up on the barricade and give yourself some, some stability. But this will make a world of difference. So I just wanted to show these bags to you. I was out here messing around with the barricades. I figured I'd roll the camera and uh, give myself something to do. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you're seeing, like, share, subscribe. Uh, thanks, thanks to you guys that are subscribed, and I'll, I'll catch you in the next one. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.